After five years of using an already used, fairly old 32-inch 1080p TV, I finally had it down on me and I replaced it with this, a 50-inch 4K Hisense TV. Now, I paid my own money for this, this is mine and gonna live in my living room for probably the next five or ten years, um, and so I want to explain why I picked this one and why you might want to as well, and also some of the, the downfalls or downsides of going with, well, this one too. Either way, stick around and make sure you're subscribed for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And also, if you want to see a much higher end version of this, then you can check out the Philips Momentum 55, which is a 4K 120Hz monitor TV type thing. Now, let's start with one of the most important parts, if not the most important, its price. I paid £349 for this which is honestly astonishing for a 4K display in general. I mean, I've reviewed a fair number of 4K monitors and not many of them have been under that price point. So to have a 50 inch TV, a smart TV at that, smart, uh, you know, cost that much is, is kind of crazy. Now it's all well and good having a low price point, but if it's terrible, then what's the point? Happily though, this is far from terrible. Now, it's not exceptional, it does have some flaws that we will go over in a second, but it is more than adequate, especially for the price tag, and considering that if you wanted a Samsung or LG branded one, you'd probably be looking at 50 to 200 pounds more for a similar spec model. So what keeps this thing from being exceptional? Well, the first one is the panel. It's just not quite as crisp as you maybe could hope for. I am a little bit on the spoiled side since I have seen uh, some of the really fancy OLEDs and I've also tested, like I said, that Philips Momentum 55 which is an incredibly stunning display. Although, to make it clear, all of those displays are a thousand pounds or more so it's hardly a fair comparison. The colors are decent, although it's not quite as vibrant as you might hope for. It is only an 8-bit plus FRC frame rate control panel as opposed to, say, true 10-bit, which means that it only covers 100% of the sRGB spectrum rather than a, a wider color space like the DCI-P3 spectrum. Either way, it's good enough for, for most consumption, but it leaves a little bit lacking. I would also mention that the brightness on this isn't fantastic. It does technically natively support HDR10, but honestly the, the panel and the, the backlight isn't really good enough to, well, make me want to turn HDR on. The built-in speakers are passable. There are two 8-watt bottom firing units that are fairly flat and fairly muted, um, and so if you did want to use this with a soundbar or a you know, dedicated speaker setup, that would be better. They're certainly usable, but if you want to get the most out of the, the immersive viewing experience, then yeah, you want to use something else. With that said, you can use SPDAF, a 3.5mm jack, or Bluetooth if you want to add anything extra. The TV's OS is fine. It's called Vida U OS, which it's about as good as its name implies it is, to say, passable. It has most of the features you would expect. It's got all of the standard streaming sites like Netflix, it's got Plex, YouTube, and everything else. And that works okay, although it's not overly impressive. The menu system that it has doesn't lead to, uh, to, to many extra options and also has a few interesting like denoising features, which I mostly just turn off. It's also not quite as polished as I would like. One thing I noticed is that when you're, say, watching a video on YouTube and then you press the home button on the remote to bring up this, well, home screen, it doesn't pause the, the, the content that you're watching, it doesn't suspend the app while you open up this menu. This menu is more of a splash screen that just takes over the display, but whatever app you're running behind it carries on going. What that means is that if you're watching a video on YouTube, it gets to the end and you press home because you want to switch over to Netflix or I don't know, whatever else, uh, it will autoplay videos in the background, including ads and you have all the audio with no easy way to control it. What you have to do is press back, then pause your content, then go back to the main menu, which seems like a 
bit of a weird way to do it. And on the note of YouTube, I did also notice that it seemed to be cropping YouTube videos sort of as if it had overscan turned on, which I didn't see any options that I could change to, to turn that off or to, to zoom it back out again, which was a little annoying. Basically, this will do anything a Roku, Roku will, including it even has Roku style quick launch buttons on the remote. But I think I would prefer to have a Roku connected and use that instead, rather than the slight jankiness of this. So at this point, you're probably sitting there wondering why the hell I paid £350 for this thing if it's got all of those problems. Well, the thing is that the majority of the problems that I've mentioned don't really end up mattering. Because when you sit down in front of this thing, stick a film on, it is an incredibly immersive, really nice, enjoyable experience that, you know, I don't really mind. I already have a soundbar that I connect up. It's a, an Orbit soundbar I reviewed a fair number of years ago now. Um, and so that takes care of the sound issues. And then in terms of you know, the panel, it's plenty good enough for, for me for content consumption. Even if I'm watching 1080p content, it still looks miles better than my old 32 inch 1080p display anyway. So I am more than happy with the, the experience of this. And I already have a Roku and Chromecast Ultra. And so I can just use those instead of the built-in OS. And even if I do want to use the built-in OS, it does an okay job. I had a few bugs in Plex where it didn't want to play my Rick and Morty clip, uh, you know, episodes, uh, but there is one nice thing. This doesn't have any ads baked into it, unlike Samsung displays. Now, of course, it wouldn't be a Tech Team GB video without me playing games on it, which of course I did. I was playing some CSGO with my underdesk PC, which is just an RX 480, but in CSGO that's more than enough, even at 4K, and it was a reasonable experience. Unfortunately, this doesn't seem to support FreeSync, which means that it was a pretty teary mess most of the time, um, and it was a, a little bit on the, the jittery side, which wasn't great, although with game mode turned on, the input lag I was uh, I tested with my time sleuth was only about four milliseconds, which is really very good for, well, a TV. Also in terms of the response time, uh, once you factor in the backlight strobing that seems to be on potentially just with game modes, that was running at around about seven milliseconds of black to white response time, which is again, pretty decent considering this is a 50 inch TV that's certainly not a gaming display. All things considered, I'm not sure that there is a better value on the market right now, at least for this sort of display. Sure, it's fairly average overall. It doesn't have 4K 120Hz, it's not an OLED, and it doesn't have FreeSync, but when you factor in the price, it makes it pretty hard to ignore. Of course, those are my thoughts, and like I said, I'm a little biased since I actually paid for it, so feel free to let me know if I missed a trick and there's a better value proposition out on the market instead, and let me know what you think of this uh, display or this TV too. Is this one you'd pick up yourself or would you go with something smaller, 43 inch for example, or maybe something bigger or something fancier OLED? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Now if you wanna check out this TV, I'm gonna leave a link to the closest one that I can find of this variant around the world as I have the UK version and so it will vary. That will be an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to a local Amazon store where you can see pricing when and when you watch this because it can and does vary. Um, so feel free to check that out. Otherwise, there is going to be a whole load of other links in the description you can check out too. If you're buying from Overclockers UK, feel free to check out that link. If you want to support me directly on Patreon and get cool rewards for doing so, like access to our Money Men Discord chats or sponsor free videos, feel free to check that out. Or merch reviews or t-shirts like this one as well. Otherwise, I'm going to leave the Philips Momentum video over there for you to check out if you want to spend a thousand pounds instead of 350 and feel free to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this one. I promise to not do any more massive displays for the next uh, week or two anyway. Either way, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave those in the comments down below. We'll see you all in the next video.